So, are we having a good time? Great, because we do have a good time. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about web components with Angular. But just before we get started, Sherry, do you want to start with a small introduction of yourself? Sure. As Anna mentioned, uh, I'm Sherry. Um, I'm working as Azure Developer Technical Lead at Microsoft, based in Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, I have a lot of passion for communities and having a tendency to make myself involved in a lot of community projects. Some of them are listed here. For example, I'm uh, organizer, one of the organizers of GDG Copenhagen, uh, NG Copenhagen. And any of you ever heard of NG Vikings Conference? OK. And uh, also NG Spain? That's very new. So <laughs> I'm, uh, both actually me and Anna, we are one of the organizers of both. And I guess Anna is going to explain a little bit about that ones as well. So can you give an introduction about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Anna Cedri, and I'm a developer advocate for Ultimate Courses, previously known as Ultimate Angular. Just like Sherry, um, I'm very involved in the community, and I'm also an organizer of GDG, I'm a women's tech maker lead, and the organizer of NG Vikings, which will be happening in May. There's still tickets left, so that's cool. And NG Spain is the first time we're doing it this year, so if you want to escape the cold in October and come south, that's where we'll be. So, yeah, also, if you want stickers later, just come find us. Cool. So, how many of you know what web components are? Good. That's good. And how many of you ever built web component before? Awesome. Awesome. And how many of you have built one with um, Angular? Okay. Okay. Good. That's good. Cool. So just, be f just to make sure we're all on the same page, Sherry, can you give us a brief overview of what a web component is? Sure. Uh, web components are components uh, that they build in a way that from the beginning you have the, and the style encapsulation, which means that there won't be any leak in or out from the component, and the component is going to behave the same no matter what happens in the global CSS. And, uh, and then they also a platform agnostic, totally, which means that you can finally create some component that is going to behave the same, no matter if you are going to use it in Angular, Vue, or React, or any other platform. And uh, speaking of the platform, uh, not all the, actually, uh, speaking of the f uh, frameworks, there's uh, not all of them, they are using web components fully yet. Rob Dotson from Polymer team has a lot of awesome projects, but one of them is the custom elements everywhere. You can check that in that website and then find out the frameworks that you are using today. Is it going to support, is it supporting web components or not, and in which stage are they? Majority of them, they are supporting most of it. And uh, speaking of uh, Angular, if you are using Angular, you should not be worried about that because it's one of the very first ones that is fully adopted web component. Okay, so web components is only the consisting, uh, is consisting of these three simple technologies. One is HTML template, the other one is custom elements, and shadow DOM. Used to be HTML import was also one of them, but with the ES6 modules, you really don't need to uh, use them. And uh, there, will, there is another technology that Polymer team is working on that, which is uh, HTML modules, is not there yet, but if you ever seen any article that it referred to HTML import, so that's a sign that the, the article might be a little bit outdated. Okay, Anna, can you tell us that with the, actually with this technology, how can we quickly build a web component? Sure, so um, we're just gonna take a look quickly how to see how we can build this simple button here with vanilla JS. So in our HTML, we would have this. This would be our web component, which is called SA button. We have a custom attribute which we made called text, and that is where we add the text of the button. We also have this style attribute, which is the default attribute, wh where we add all these custom CSS variables which we have made for the developer to access so they can change styling whatever they need to there. So let's see how it's done. Uh, in our JavaScript, we create a template with the styling and the HTML. In this case, it's just a simple button. And as you can see, in the styling, we have the CSS variables. 
then we create the class with our custom element, and custom elements are actually extended from HTML element, allowing us and providing us with some really cool methods. And we're not going to go into those callbacks right now, but um, later on, you'll see a slide with a previous talk we gave where you can go more in depth on that. You can also add Shadow DOM here. Well, you should add Shadow DOM here. And um, you do it simply by um, cloning the template and then appending it to the Shadow DOM. Then you add all those callbacks. And then finally, what you will do is define the custom element. And you do that simply by calling custom elements.define, giving it a name and a selector. I just want to note that I've actually got a bit of a cold, so if my voice is a bit weird, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, OK, so that's that. And like I said, if you're interested in how to, go, how to build web, web components more, more in depth, check out this talk, because today we're not going to go too much in depth. So what are we going to actually see today, Sherry? So first of all, we are going to create a web component with Angular. And then we're going to see how we can actually add that web component to an Angular project. And once we have it there, we are going to find out how actually our web components is going to communicate with the other components. And then we're going to take a look into the future. So as you can see, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get straight into it. First of all, how do we build a web component with Angular? Well, thanks to the Angular team, they have built Angular elements. And this allows us to build a web component with Angular and with all the tooling and the ecosystem that Angular provides, which is really awesome. So a big thank you to them. And let's take a look to see how this is done. First of all, we need to have Angular installed in our machine. Then we need to generate a new project. Um, when generating a new project, these flags that we have used here are just out of personal preferences. You don't need them for Angular elements. And then we go into our directory, we add Angular elements, and last but not least, we need to import the web components, custom elements, and save this to our project so we have access to all of the polyfills. We then import that into our polyfills.ts file, and then what we need to do is in our tsconfig.json, we need to change the target to ES2015 so that browsers that can natively read web components can detect this. So that's all you really need to do until now. And for those of you who aren't too familiar with Angular, um, I don't know why you wouldn't be familiar with Angular, but just in case, um, you generate a component with a CLI, and this is what you would get. Then this has nothing of Angular elements. It's purely an Angular component. What we need to do now is actually add our template, which would be our button. And it has a simple interpolation here. And then we call the input so that later on the developer can actually um, customize it. OK, so you, show, you showed us that how we create the component, and then we already covered the, the template part. So how about the Shadow DOM? How we add that one? Well, this part is actually very simple. What we need to do is call viewEncapsulation.ShadowDOM. And we need this so that we don't have any styling or behavioral leakages in or out. So let's see how this is done. All we need to do is, inside our component, import the view encapsulation method from the Angular core. And then in our component directive, we need to call encapsulation view encapsulation .shadow DOM. And that's it. It's done. That was pretty simple. And how about the custom element? How can we define that? We need to register this in our ng module. And we do this by, first of all, we need to import the create custom element, which we're going to use in just a second. We need to remove any bootstrapping of the app component, because that's not what we want to bootstrap. So we need to tell the ng module that our entry component is actually going to be the button component. And then while exporting the class, this is where we use that create custom element method so that we have access to that method which we, def that which we used earlier to define the custom element again by giving it a name and a selector. And then we bootstrap it all up, and that's it. So I can say that it's pretty simple, right? It's really easy, and it's really lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get great. excited. Don't, don't get excited. Wait a minute. You, you showed us how to create a, a component. That's good. It was simple and easy. How to build it. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. So the thing is that with the with Angular CLI today, uh, we have actually we can do ng build, 
And, and it's pretty good and pretty simple. But what it creates for us is going to create the whole Angular project for us, which is by default, there will be four bundles. And that's not what we need. What we need is that we want to have one bundle, and then we want it to be a small bundle, because we want to just like any other component, we want to import it and then use it. We cannot do that. And then the other thing is that our bundle size is also a little bit huge because because we are going to put the whole Angular, like uh, Angular core and Angular element, all of those things inside our bundle. So there are ways to take care of this one, and uh, it normally ends up having ejecting your Webpack config as well, which is not always the best solution. So simply, it's complicated, Anna. But thanks to a really good friend, uh, Manfred Sire, um, he created NGX Build Plus, which allows us to easily fix all of this problem. By the way, if you don't know him, I really recommend you to follow him because he's, he's actually producing a, really, uh, a lot of useful content all the time. And uh, he's one of the sources that I always follow and learn everything from him. Okay, so what is that NGX bit plus? It extends the CLI because it's used all the schematics. And uh, so there won't be need any uh, for the ejecting the Webpack config either or do anything funky in order to have one bundle. So you get it by default. And then the other thing is that, as I mentioned to you, that you will have, uh, with the normal way, we are going to have Angular core, Angular element, and all of these things in the bundle. So imagine you have an, an Angular project which happens to have, let's say, 10 Angular elements in it. So the result is going to be ha to have 11 times Angular core in your project, and that's not good. But with the ng-x uh, build plus, you can remove easily, I'm going to show you in a minute, that remove all of this uh, from your bundle. So your bundle is going to be smaller, and also you're going to be able, with the help of universal modules, you're going to add it once you need it. So. So that sounds really awesome, Sherry, but do you think you can tell us how we can implement it? Uh, sure, it's pretty easy. So first of all, we are going to take advantage of the CLI, and we just do that ng, ng add and ngx bit plus. What it does for you is going to add it to your project, and since it has it uses the schematics, it's going to change some default config in your, uh, in your Angular project as well. So one of them is that it's going to change your default build. So from now on, once you write the ng build, Angular is going to use ngx bit plus. And this is the file that I told you that you can create a file like that and say that, okay, I really don't need any of this thing because I know that I have RxJS and I know that I have the core in by default in an Angular project. I want to remove them all from my bundle. Once you do that, you simply go back to the terminal and you write ng build, and then you are going to use the flags that you need. For example, I want to have dash dash prod. Uh, so Angular is going to do a lot of optimization on my build as well. And then I'm going to say that, remember the file that I showed you? So I want to use that, I want to extract that as well. And I'm going to have, I want to have one bundle size. So that's it. So now our component is ready. In. Okay, that's good. So. One thing that I want to mention here that um, I don't know if you heard of Ivy. So Ivy is the, is, uh, is the new compiler for Angular. Currently, it's behind the flag. So it, 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 has a, it actually is going to uh, help with a lot of things, but one of the things is going to improve our code to be more tree shakeable. So after we, we are building an, uh, a component with Angular, or with Ivy, it's going to actually remove all the unnecessary code. So you can say that then our bundle size is going to shrink so much that it's going to be one of the best, actually, if you use Ivy. So currently, it's not totally ready. With the Angular 8, it's going to be there, so it's ready. But it's still going to be behind the flag because Angular team, they want to make sure that it's backward compatible and also um, it wants to be tested. But from the Angular 9, it's going to be the, the default um, kind of compiler for Angular. So, Anna, uh, now that we have this component there and we, uh, we actually, we, uh, we, we have it ready built and how we can use it in an Angular project. 
Well, this part is pretty simple. We just mainly need to import it into our project. But before doing so, we need to remember to install the polyfills and add them to our polyfills.ts file. The next important step, and we really recommend to do this step as soon as you know that you're going to be working with web components, is that you add in your ng module the schemas array and the custom element schema. You're basically doing this so that you tell Angular, look, there's not just Angular components, there are also web components. So if you do forget to do this, don't worry, because if you use, for example, Chrome DevTools, it's going to shout at you anyhow. So. And then, like I said, we import it into the place where we're going to use it, and we simply use it. So that's pretty, yeah, pretty straightforward. That. Yeah, that was pretty straightforward. But, but now, how that component is supposed to talk to the other components there? Well, you should treat web components, if you've noticed, it looks like a toilet web component. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you, um, you should treat web components like an Angular component. And when I say that is, you know that best practices when it comes down to component-based architecture is that we should have a one-way data flow, right? So if we start on the top level, we should have a container which has child components and child components. And that way, the data will be flowing downwards and the events will be flowing, going upwards. So say, for example, the bottom re rectangle there, well, it's not a rectangle, it's a square, sorry, um, is our button, right? And as it's a button, it's going to have an event. And that event will, something's going to happen there. So it should be emitted up to the parent, and then that should be emitted up to the container, and the container will handle that event, pass it to the service, the service will then do whatever it needs to, pass the data back down to the container, Container will then pass and handle that data down to whatever um, child components it, components it needs to. So we really just want to emphasize that you shouldn't treat it like something completely different. You should treat web components inside an Angular project like an Angular component. And to remember this, just take a look at this photo and remember it. Because that way, you know that you have to put your events up and data down. OK, so this is a very small project. Can't really call it a project that we did here. <laughs> and those buttons that you see there are actually the web components. Now, when we show our slides, if you see a GitHub logo or a Stack, a Stack Blitz logo, you can click on them, and it will take you to the code. So later when we share them, um, you can go ahead and take a look at that. So what have we actually done up until now, Sherry? So we basically. Uh, with few steps, we created an, a web component with Angular, and then we added it to the project, and then we found out that the Angular, the Angular elements or web components, they are just like components. We don't need to think that how these components, they can communicate with each other. However you're taking care of it in your project before, any components that you have, you just treat the new components just like them as well. So is it the time to say that the web components work? Well, in my honest opinion, I think they're really awesome because they allow us to have maximum interoperability. And also, we can just pass them through our teams. It's really cool. We can also use um, frameworks that we are used to, such as Angular, to create these web components, meaning that we don't really have to learn another language or another framework, which isn't actually that common in our world, right? We're constantly having to learn new things. So I think that's really cool. What do you think, Sherry? Uh, they absolutely do work. Uh, what I really love is that the community adopted it so much. So you can, every day you can see that there are a lot of people that create a, a lot of projects, a lot of toolings to develop and create web components. Actually, uh, one of, I just noticed that a few hours ago, one of my friends in Denmark, he actually created a really nice VS Code um, plugin to take care of the typing in your Angular elements. In, Actually, that was in another web component. Um, and, and there are a lot of these pro projects out there. And in the other hand, that there are a lot of success stories there as well with a different bigger or small, bigger project that they took care of it. I don't know if you ever used Ionic before. So Ionic is one of the really good success stories. It used to be so bonded with the Angular, and it was really good for us in Angular community. But the people in the other communities, they could not use it. So what they did, they created a library called Stencil.js, which is 
which is actually really good. I recommend you to use it. And they converted all the components that they had before to the web component. And as a result of that, you can use Ionic today with Vue and React as well, which is good. And on the other hand, uh, for example, the big companies uh, like financial company banks, ING here or BBVA, they adopted it and they de they deploying the features with web components. I used to work at Nordia Bank, and um, um, a few weeks ago, some of my ex colleagues they sent me an email and said that, yeah, we finally convinced everyone, and then we are having the web components in the production. And just remember, they have customers that they are using IE 11, and it works. And, uh, and then they're also using it in different projects in Angular, React, and Vue as well. So this is really good. And speaking of the browsers, the browsers are ready. They are, they are still some that they are lacking, but the good thing is that thanks to the Polymer team with all the polyphies that they create, the, the polyphies today, they are pretty good. So you should not, you should not kind of say that, ah, okay, um, we don't use it because the browsers are not ready. They are there. So you should not be worried about that, and there is no reason to say, I can't use web component. So, Anna, how about next step? So are there some projects or something that we should have a track of them? Yes, yeah, so there was this proposal by Apple that was backed by Google, and then the Polymer team started working on it, and they created something called Lit HTML. So it's kind of like GSX in the sense that it has um, the change detection, although it's a lot speedier and a lot better. But um, let's check out to see what Lit, it's not another templating language, by the way. Let's take a look at what it actually is. So Lit HTML uses all of the native browser features, such as HTML template and cloning, which allows things to go a lot more faster. And unlike the virtual DOM, what it will do is it will only re-render sections of the template that actually change without re-rendering the whole template. So that makes it really, really fast. And last but not least, it's also very customizable and extensible because it has quite a few directives that we can use. We really loved it, so we did actually create the web component with lit HTML. Again, there's a Stack Blitz logo behind me. Um, you can check out the code more in detail later because we don't have time for that now. But, Sherry, I've been hearing about something different a bit recently, something called lit element. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. Lit element is also another project from Polymer team, and, um, and um, it builds on top of lit HTML, so it has everything that Anna mentioned, but in addition to that, it's a base class to create web components, which means that when you are, when you are especially not using any framework, so you have to take care of a lot of things on your own. For example, you have to manually call the uh, rendering function as soon as your DOM is, is actually is connected to, your component can attach to the DOM, you should manually trigger some um, call, call, some callback and then trigger some function. But that, whereas a little shimmel does that for you. Or if you have any input to your component and that input change, you have to manually take care of that. And lead element taking care of that for you. And, uh, and then the, the other thing is that it become even kind of, and it is going to uh, help you a lot with the change detection, so you, your performance is boosting up a lot. And you should not say that, ah, this is another library that I have to actually attach it to my project. No, 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 it's a so tiny project, so uh, you should not be worried about that. And um, this is the result uh, the, that actually we created, the, we applied that bottom with the lead element. Uh, I know that this is a very small project, but the, the, the thing is that with lead, with lead element, you are going to ship fewer line of code to your client, and it's really good. And um, this is a video from Justin Fignani, who is, uh, who is one of the person behind the lead element, and he's talking about lead element at Chrome Dev Summit in November. And this is the link that you should actually, uh, re we really recommend you to go and watch it, that he talks about everything. And I specifically use this, um, uh, this is a screenshot from the project that he, he actually he talks about, because with lead element and lead HTML, you have a lot of directives. 
and those directives are really good. And you can see here that inside your template, you can asynchronously get the data from server and then do all the error handling that you want inside your template. And remember, because of the change detection that in lead element, it's only going to re-render that specific part of DOM that you want to. So this is pretty powerful in my opinion. Yeah, so Sherry, um, say for example, we have a project and we add 10 different web components in there. Now, they all have their own styling, and if we have to access each single one of them and give them 10 different CSS custom variables, that's going to be quite a lot of work. So do you have a solution for this? Yeah, I, I really hear what you say. And I personally have that problem a lot, especially with those CSS custom variables. You might end up having a lot of that. And even though that you do the, you have the documentation and then you, you, you actually keep track of updating that as well, and you pass it on that element to another person, that's hell. It's, it's not the best solution. And, and it's also affecting your performance as well. I came across this one. Is it the CSS shadow part, which I found that pretty awesome and uh, powerful. What it does for you, is that you are going to, inside your, inside your uh, custom element, you just open one of these um, slots. L just like a slot, you can open it for, the for actually for uh, customization. You can apply directly CSS and style it in the way that you want to. Let's look at it and see that how it works. Imagine that you have, uh, you have actually this one. So you have an element called X, uh, XFoo, and then Inside your shadow root, you have a div, you give a part, some, whatever. You have an input, and you give a, you use the attribute part with some input. And you can also have a part that you really don't want to let anyone to touch it. So how to use that? Pretty simple. Inside your host uh, component in the CSS, you can just say that, OK, remember that I have the x that, that foo. Uh, as an element here, go and find it. It should have also a part, which is some part, and then just apply any CSS that you want to there. And this is pretty awesome and easy. And you can go one step further and say that find that part, I want to change the behavior for the hover. Or you can go and have the uh, kind of that find the input and say that I want to change the behavior of the whole placeholder. And this is pretty nice. Uh, there is a link here um, with a, uh, for a really good article from Monica and Polymer team that um, they actually, she explained that how deep you can go with that. And you can even have custom element inside, custom element inside there, and then you go a step and change the whole behavior. I guess this is going to fix the uh, problem with the theming, yeah. in my opinion. This sounds awesome. So can we actually say that Angular loves web components? I would say so. Yeah, I um, also think so. We pretty much yeah. love web components yeah. too. And we hope that you guys also love web components now. So um, we just want to say thank you to all for listening to us today. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah.